Believe it or not, but in between the Royal Mail simulation gameplay and taking tumbles off cliff edges after accidentally unequipping the power skeleton, Death Stranding actually has a pretty massive, pretty robust story. Its tale of BTs, strands, and making America whole again is initially unknowable and defined by mystery. But director and writer Hideo Kojima somehow manages to bring all of those grand plot strands together, pun absolutely intended, for a satisfying finale full of twists, turns, and one of the most emotional fake-outs this side of Glenn diving under the dumpster in The Walking Dead. Considering the final act is over five hours long though, and the ending itself is a two hour long cutscene, Death Stranding's plot reveals can feel like an overwhelming assault. However, all the information is there and it just needs the pieces putting back together again. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and this is Death Stranding Ending Explained. Number 8. The Last Stranding The major plot twist at the heart of Death Stranding is that the player has been unwittingly working for the bad guys the whole time. Spurred on by his sister Amelie to reconnect America, the entire game sees Sam going from place to place to establish the chiral network, something which should bring together communities all across America from one end to the next. That still happens at the end of the game, but it turns out the chiral network serves another purpose, to bring about the Last Stranding. The idea is that the Death Stranding that happens before the start of the game is one of five that have occurred throughout history, all being extinction events that offered something of a reset button for species on Earth. One of these took out dinosaurs, for instance, and have been reoccurring all throughout history, but humanity has always endured. Now, though, by reconnecting the chiral network and linking everyone's beaches to Amelie's, you've enabled The Last Stranding, which will end the cycle by eliminating all life forever and ever and ever. The Big Bang is referenced throughout the game and The Last Stranding is intended to be an event on this scale, only instead of bringing life to the cosmos, it'll take it all away. Number 7. Who is Amelie? The Last Stranding is Amelie's grand plan, and her allegiances are also a recurring thread throughout the entire game. The whole story kicks off because Sam wants to save his sister from apparently being held captive. He couldn't give two craps about America, but this personal connection is enough to get him on the journey. This motivation is strengthened even more because it comes just after the death of Sam and Amelie's mother, Bridget. After freeing her though, it's revealed the whole setup was manipulation on Amelie's part to get Sam where he needed to be and put into action The Last Stranding. She reveals that Amelie and Bridget are essentially one and the same. Bridget is the being's heart, essentially the human body, a vessel that lives, breathes, and ages on Earth, while Amelie is the car, the soul which exists only on her beach. This explains why nobody has actually seen Amelie, only why she communicates via hologram, and why she never ages, which is brought up right at the beginning of the game, and everyone just kind of goes with it. But why does she want to bring life to an end though? Well, number six. Why Amelie wants to bring life to an end. Amelie's sudden heel turn at the end is shocking, but she's a way more complex villain than the whole end of the world thing may first suggest. That's because she is an extinction entity, a being born to usher in the Death Stranding and complete another extinction event. It's revealed that as a young child, Bridget was plagued by apocalyptic nightmares of the end of the world, visions of a future that might come true, and that meant she spent a lot of the time in hospital. Eventually, she realized those dreams were a real future she was born to usher in, which understandably didn't sit well with her. Instead of embracing her destiny as the bringer of death, she rebelled against it, and spent her entire life trying to find a way to stop another extinction. When those attempts failed though, she decided the only course of action was to bring the cycle to an end through one final extinction. This conclusion is primarily come to because she hypothesizes that life as we know it is a fluke anyway. The Big Bang's chances of happening and bringing forth life were so minute that she sees the previous Death Strandings as a way for nature to make up for this mistake. However, each one has never fully succeeded as humanity has always persevered and thrived in spite of everything going to hell. Consequently, she decides to solve this problem by connecting everyone's beaches through the chiral network 
work, this time extinguishing humanity itself to stop the cycle continuing. Number five, Amelie's destiny and the birth of the Bridge Babies. As mentioned, in order to avoid fulfilling her role as the extinction entity, Bridget used her power as president to investigate the beaches and their origin, in the hopes of finding a way to break the extinction cycle. Back then, her car and Ha were still split and there wasn't an open connection between the two, which led to her pioneering the Bridge Baby program to forge a connection to the other side. This top secret experiment was established by the president when unique properties were discovered in the child of Clifford Unger. This child was the very first BB and Bridget protected it with lethal force, making sure only a handful of people knew it even existed. In her eyes, if this experiment failed, it couldn't be replicated and she'd lose the one chance she had at avoiding her destiny. That's partly because Bridget had been stricken with cancer in her 20s, which she surmises is a punishment for trying to avoid her EE duty. Of course, things don't go to plan. Old Cliff doesn't take all that well to having his child forcibly taken away from him to live as a tool. And with the help of Die Hardman, who actually served under him in his military outfit, he has the chance to escape the compound with BB. Sadly though, that doesn't go well. Number four, Sam's real family and his connection to Bridget. This first bridge baby experiment is the context of the flashback Sam occasionally has when he plugs into Luke. The finale pieces all of these together, showing how Cliff tried to escape, but was ultimately cornered and shot. Making it back to the room with his wife, he slumps to the ground, manages to take the bridge baby out of its container, and then cradles it in his arms. Under Bridget's orders and with her own hand guiding him, Die Hardman shoots Cliff dead, but in the process actually hits the baby as well, killing it alongside him. This baby ends up on the shores of Amelie's beach, and distraught over what her other half's desperate actions have led to, she picks the child up and stops its passage to the afterlife. In her grief, she revives the baby and sends it away from the beach and into the waves back towards the living. However, it turns out this baby is actually Sam. The moment Amelie sent the baby back is the same memory Sam has throughout the story of his sister meeting him on the beach and telling him that it's time to go back home. Likewise, the scar on Sam's stomach that's featured prominently before then is the bullet wound he received from when he was a child and was shot, which Amelie patched back together as a kind of cross. Cliff was his real father and he was the original BB, which is why he has the flashbacks when he plugged in to the other side. And when he came back, Bridget raised him as her own, with his sister Amelie visiting him in his dreams. The reason he has the unique ability to come back from the dead in-game is down to Amelie giving him that power when she revived him, transforming him into a repatriate. Number three, the Death Stranding and Origin of Dooms. Now this revival actually sounds kind of cozy and a nice way for the EE to atone for its sins, but in bringing Sam back, Amelie tampered with the natural order and opened a gateway for other beach things to follow the child back into the land of the living, which caused the Death Stranding. By trying to avoid her destiny, she ended up actually fulfilling it, with her act of grief-stricken kindness resulting in so many deaths down the line. This act also resulted in Doom's afflicted people as well, as part of Amelie's beach became meshed with the real world due to the Stranding. Now, the visions that haunted her of apocalyptic futures were burdened with other people, including Sam, and while those people couldn't control BTs like she could, they could sense and still feel them. With the extinction now underway, and Bridget's time running out, the last stranding idea is crafted as a means to stop the cycle and take out humanity in a single instance rather than slow suffering. Number two, Amelie's change of heart. And this is where Higgs comes in. Though he was initially a porter working with Fragile, he was seduced by Amelie, who gave him dooms and the power over the beaches and BTs via that creepy doll thing that acted as a physical connection to Amelie's beach, manipulating Sam into thinking he had his sister hostage. She counted on him coming to save her, but she didn't count on him and the likes of Die Hardman, Deadman, Mama, and others becoming so committed to the cause of rebuilding America and forging genuine connections along the way. Consequently, she offers Sam a choice. Either join her for the final moments of existence and end the suffering there, or let the Death Stranding extinction event play out over the course of thousands of years, with the inevitable demise she triggered Doom to still eventually happen. Putting his weapon down though, Sam hugs her, and after commenting on the resilience of the human spirit to persevere and come together in spite of 
how bad things got, she agrees to stay on her beach alone and sacrifice the connections she made in order to postpone the extinction for as long as possible. It's a pretty tragic fate, and she initially doesn't know why Sam would want to live in a world doomed to die, as existence in general is nothing more than a fluke in her eyes, and death strandings will continue to happen to fix it. Of course, the reason is that in real life, everyone knows they're going to die eventually, and it's about what you do in the time you have available, and the relationships you forge along the way, that defines the human experience, and in general, makes life worth living in the face of death. After this, Sam is pulled from Amelie's beach by the rest of his team, who locate him because he still has Die Hardman's revolver. He then leaves forever. As Amelie sees five figures, the same five figures from Death Stranding's first trailer, in the sky away from the shore. The five other extinction entities who came before her. God, I love that. I love that image so much. Number one. Blue, Sam, and the future. With all this done, while Amelie's world might be over, the land of the living is going to exist for another couple of thousand years at least. And the question returns to just what humanity is going to do in the face of inevitable doom. Essentially, the answer is to just live day by day and moment by moment. Just because the end of the world has been postponed though, doesn't mean that Utopia has come out the other side. Humanity might be reconnected and together again, but hierarchies are still in place, some information isn't made public knowledge even after Die Hardman becomes president, and even Sam, while he's learned to embrace some personal connections, hasn't quite shaken off his nomad ways. The point isn't really about things being perfect though, but individuals, individuals with dark pasts, trying to be better, and now having the time to be better. For me, this comes through perfectly in the game's final mission. Taking Lou to the incinerator to be disposed of. Yeah, we all had a big cry, didn't we? All the way through the story, the BB's days have been numbered. Because of the state they exist in, they're not expected to last more than a year. And because they're viewed as mere equipment, they're disposed of as soon as they've served their purpose. Of course, Sam, the player, and even Deadman have formed a connection with Lou over the course of this journey, and they aren't just going to let her go easily. A handy flashback quickly reminds the player that taking a BB out of its pod has a 70% chance of failure. But against all the odds, Lou survives, and Sam takes her with him to raise her as his own in place of the daughter he lost years ago. And for me, Lou's survival kind of sums up Death Stranding's entire point. The odds were overwhelmingly not in the favour of this move going well, but it was in the hope in that 30%. And Lou's survival kind of sums up Death Stranding's entire point. The odds were overwhelmingly not in favour of this going well, but it was the hope in that 30% and the desire to gamble on a successful outcome despite knowing tragedy was more likely that makes the human spirit destined to overcome everything. So that's our attempt to put Death Stranding's separate strands kind of back together to form some coherent ending. And I know I missed a lot here. We didn't even get a chance to touch upon Clifford Unger and his beaches, all the individual fates of characters like Die Hardman, whose real name is absolutely ridiculous. Like, check that out. I can't believe Kojima has done this. But either way, let us know in the comments what you think of this video. And while you're down there, can you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh, you've been watching What Culture. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.